Hi guys and welcome back to Now Gardening. I have been gone for the last couple of weeks. I don't know if you missed me online or not, but I was visiting my family in the US and today I just wanna take a moment to talk about container gardening. I thought this would be a good moment to actually talk about grow bags and bucket gardening and some different things that you can grow in buckets and grow bags. So let's get to so it. The first thing you've probably heard of people growing in grow bags and containers is potatoes. I don't think that's probably going to come as any surprise to anyone that's watching this today, but although I do have potatoes growing in both my no dig area and in my raised bed, I do have potatoes growing in grow bags as well. So I'll come back to that in just a moment and show you what the potatoes look like growing in my garden versus the grow bags and you're probably gonna be surprised. The second thing on my list for anybody who saw last year, my video on bucket gardening is growing turnips. I love growing turnips in buckets and in grow bags. This year I grew exclusively in grow bags. So let me show you what those look like. To give you an idea how easy it is to grow turnips, I wanted to show you the timeline of when I planted them to when I harvested them. What are you planting there? Uh, these are turnips. And you planted them there? So here is when I was planting them on April the 6th. Here we are approximately five to six weeks later when I was harvesting them in May. Nice. Huh. Look at that. Way bigger than my hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice one, huh? For those of you who might have seen my video on survival crops to grow during hard times, you might remember that turnips made my list. And this is a great example why, because they are incredibly easy to grow. The third thing that I'm growing in containers this year are tomatoes. You really have to find the right depth of containers. It's very important if you are growing in buckets or in uh, grow bags, because tomatoes can have a really deep root system. We're talking about 12 to 18 inches. So I would recommend a minimum of a five gallon bucket in order to grow tomatoes. I did not put them in my grow bags because the grow bags are wide, but they're not quite as deep. And I really wanted to make sure that the tomatoes had plenty of room for their roots to grow down and to grow strong plants that would not topple over. Now before I go on to number four, as promised, I'd like to go back and show you the potatoes that are growing outside in my garden as opposed to growing in my grow bags. And what's interesting here is that the ones in the garden in the no dig area and the ones in my grow bags were planted on the exact same day on April the 6th. And as you can see, the ones in the grow bags are significantly taller plants than the ones here in the no dig area. I do have an idea about why that might be, and I'll come back to that at the end of the video when I talk about some tips of growing in grow bags. But suffice it to say, we won't know for sure which one has grown better until we actually do the harvest later on this summer. The fourth thing to grow in containers on my list is peppers. Now maybe you already saw the video that I put out last week on troubleshooting pepper plants. Of course, I do have peppers going out in my garden in raised beds, but we are really trying out a couple of different container methods as well. Now moving on to number five, we have lettuce and greens. This lettuce, I'll actually be honest, was a complete volunteer. It popped up here. It's in a flower pot container that actually has a water reserve underneath. So I decided to let it grow, let it go, let it grow, and see how it would turn out. And as you can see right now, I mean, I could harvest it. It's not quite as big as the ones in my raised bed, but it's a pretty darn healthy lettuce plant. Now for the sixth thing that you can grow in containers, and that is herbs. Last year I grew a number of different herbs in containers. I grew lavender and thyme and sage and you name it, several different herbs in containers before I actually got my herb garden up and running. And now before I go on to number seven, I just wanted to take a moment to share, as I promised earlier, a few tips for growing in containers. The first tip that I would give you if you're starting a container garden is to choose the material of those containers wisely. As you've seen here, containers come in various materials such as fabric grow bags, plastic grow bags, terracotta, buckets, and so on. And each material has its pros and its cons. Plastic containers are lightweight and easy to move around. However, in my experience, I have found that my buckets actually dry out way faster than my fabric grow bags. Grow bags, on the other hand, give you really great drainage and promote healthier root systems. However, they are a little clunky when it comes to moving them around. The second thing I would say is to make sure that you use a high quality potting mix. There are many different types of soil at your garden store, but you should specifically look for one that is for container gardening. And that is because these soils have actually been amended 
specifically for containers to help them drain better, to retain the moisture that they need, and so on. To go along with that, I would say that when you're preparing your grow bags for the first time, that is a great time to add fertilizer if your soil does not already contain fertilizer. And what I simply do is I mix the soil all in a wheelbarrow and I add the fertilizer at that time. And this is why I believe that my potatoes in my grow bags are growing faster than the ones out in my no-dig area. And that is because the fertilizer that I added to the grow bags is measured specifically to the amount of soil I have, whereas in the no-dig area it is not. And then the other thing which is really important with container gardening is to keep your moisture level in check. And this is because containers tend to dry out faster than a regular garden. So a good rule of thumb is if you stick your finger down about an inch or a couple of centimeters and the soil is dry, that's probably a good indication that you need to add some water. That said, you wanna make sure that you do not overwater. So make sure your containers have good drainage holes and don't let them sit around in sanding water. If you do, that will contribute to pests and diseases in your container garden. So I don't know if you can see the rain sprinkle starting to come down, but, whoops, someone just got me. But for number seven, I'm talking about blueberries now this blueberry actually it's really tiny but it's a true success story because this guy was completely dead after our drought last year it was actually out in our garden and i dug it up and it had nothing nothing green left on it, it was very brittle but it looked like it had a solid root system so i tossed it in this little pot i'm gonna pot it up again soon and what i love about growing blueberries in containers is that you can control the acidity of the soil blueberries love an acidic soil and unfortunately here we have a very alkaline soil and so i've struggled i do grow some blueberries out in the yard out in the garden i do have to add soil acidifiers such as peat moss and other things but i am actually thinking in the fall to transplant them all to big containers to have my full blueberry crop growing in containers going forward number seven a huge recommendation especially if you have alkaline soil is to grow your blueberries in containers. Those are my seven recommendations for container gardening. See you next time folks. Bye.